Well, good afternoon and welcome everybody. We've got uh, just about half the participants that registered uh, logged in. We're going to give it just another minute. My name is Jason Barnes and uh, I'm the Chief Operations Officer here uh, at Genesis and I've got alongside of me the head of our help desk and training team, uh, Jessica Panko. So uh, it's good to be here with everyone this afternoon. We're going to get started in just a second. Keep chat open here. And we can, again, everybody, we'll just give it one more minute. If there is a question that you have, uh, feel free to put it in the chat. Uh, oh, there's people joining us right now. Um, today, we're going to start off by talking about ICD DEN preparations and what it is that we've done in the system and how we've gone about helping you do a few things, namely, uh, identify which codes you know you're going to take from ICD-10 ICD uh, from your ICD-9 codes and then actually give you a little bit of an explanation on how on the back end we're going to help you identify which payer combinations uh, you know sometimes you're going to have a primary insurance company that accepts ICD-10s and a secondary that doesn't so we want to let you know how we're going to go about handling that and we'll get started here in just one minute A good sign. A bunch of people joining. Yep. Great. So we've got we've got a bunch of people joined. We're just again one more moment, and we'll get you started. Don't want to make anyone wait too long, especially all of those who are here right on time. Love it. All right. What do you say, Jess? Let's get started. Let's get started, right? Yeah. So I'm going to I'll close this. I can open up a, a little bit later. It will also give me a little indication if somebody does have a question. So feel free to chat it in at any time. And I'll just do a, a brief overview again of what uh, this next hour is going to include. The first section is all about ICD-10, demonstrating to all of the practices out there, clinicians and staff alike, what it is that we've done in the system to help providers do two things. Number one is make that connection between their ICD-9 and ICD-10 codes and show you some pretty cool features that we've done to help you star the uh, and, and make it easy to access the diagnosis codes you use most often. Uh, and then Jess, I ask you to, to help them walk through how to the, go about testing that over the next month so that when October 1 actually hits, they, they've got some confidence and they're able to do it. And then the other thing that we'll go over is how our system has dealt with the fact that not all insurance companies have made themselves ready for ICD-10 on October 1. So you're going to have combinations. So we're going to talk through those things and then I'll probably make a last ditch effort to tell you to talk to somebody about your documentation because ICD-10, uh, although it it sounds like a coding and billing issue, and I'm not going to say that it's not, but it, it certainly is a documentation issue. So now that you're going to be billing and coding with more specificity, that documentation has to be there to support it. And so uh, we're definitely not going over that on this call. Uh, we don't have that type of expertise, but we are going to encourage you guys uh, to go elsewhere and make sure you talk to somebody about that. So to get started uh, talking about ICD-10 codes, I, I don't really have a, a good handle on how many insurance companies have prepared for October 1. It's, uh, it's an ever-changing target. We just know that as we get indications over here for which companies are accepting them, we're able to, in real time, give you notice patients if you're treating a patient that has an insurance company that requires ICD-10 so that you can know. Some of the things that we've done, uh, we're going to demonstrate right now. We're going to give you an idea. You go into your scheduler, you, you click on a patient to check them in, and you go through the roster and you bring up their, their travel card. Looks just like this. This is what life looks like for you. You can see here that we've got two rows. I'll make it a little bit bigger for everyone to see. We've got two rows. 
one for your ICD-9 codes and one for your ICD-10 codes, which as of yet have not been selected, obviously. And everyone should pay close attention to this green rectangular box uh, called ICD-9. This is going to be, is it fair to just call it the traffic light, Jeff? <laughs> It, that's it's what a good I've been, description. That's what I, I've been calling it the traffic light. Green means go. Obviously, red means stop, and yellow means you've got some caution. I'll, I'll have you go into yellow a little bit more later. But your documentation is the first place that you go when you're talking about um, diagnosis codes. You know, most of these diagnosis codes that you're going to choose through your documentation allows you to choose that ICD-9 code. I'm randomly choosing rotator cuff syndrome right here, your 726.10 on your ICD-9 code. When I choose that, you can see here that it very clearly is going to show up in your ICD-9. Right now, we want to show you the new interface that's going to be available uh, on top of that after you've chosen your ICD-9 code that's going to, I, I can call it a wizard, right? It will walk them through selecting the mappings that are applicable on the ICD-10 spectrum to the code that you've chosen on the ICD-9 spectrum. So to do that, I'm going to head over here to your diagnosis section. Now, you'll see clearly here that you've got an ICD-9 tab and an ICD-10 tab. We're in the ICD-10 tab right now. If you go back to the old ICD-9 tab, you're going to choose another one. It's going to work just like you wanted it to. You're going to you know, choose that code. It can add it to the ICD-9 spectrum. But now that you've got this particular code, we can actually map it to one of your ICD-10 codes. And we go about doing that. Yep. We click this one. There's only one option. You like for the example, Jess? I chose one that only had <laughs> one option. Makes that's, it easy. That's, that makes it easy, but in this particular case, guys, that's not going to be the case for a good, well, I'm almost all of them, right? We just kind of luckily picked one that had only one. But to you can see here the M54.2 cervicalgia uh, then puts itself very easily on your, your ICD-10 row. Uh, the follow-up to this is just at a really simple glance is, how is the system going to know to send ICD-10 codes or ICD-9? We'll get into that a little bit later. I'm not going to cover that right now. But let's go back and choose another ICD-9 code. Yep. So from this particular you know, window, I'll go in and I'll choose um, another one. Oh, we already chose that one. That's uh, meant to unchoose it, but that's OK. We'll go to the thoracic spine. Because this way I can't do it again, Jess. <laughs> All right. All right. One more time. We're going to have to choose one that's got more. Uh, they all just have one selection. It turns out that I should play uh, Russian roulette today <laughs> <laughs> or not play it. So these particular codes keep heading up here. If you head into your ICD-10 codes, you're going to see here that we're going to have some selected, some categories, knee, pain, elbow, tension, depression. These are all just random categories that we put into this demonstration patient to show you. If you do treat a lot of people with headaches, in chiropractic, you're going to have you know, a ton of patients with headaches. We can star and select any one of the codes that we're choosing to show up in this particular heading, under headaches. How do you know which codes you choose all the time? I'll get to that in just one second. But if you know there's a code you use all the time, if you choose it on the spectrum here, you can then star that code and it will end up in one of its own headings so that you don't have to go search for it time and time again. To answer the question, how do you know which codes I use all of the time? I brought up an example here. And I'll, I'll make this just a little bit bigger. This is a real practice in our office uh, that we're just putting under a demo account right now. I ran a billing statistics report, which you can get to by going through reports, billing analytics, and billing stats. And under the drop downs down here, I chose the last year. And then I chose just under which criteria I want to look at. I, I chose diagnosis one. I want to do this for a couple of reasons. If 
most of the, if you're like most of the practices that we work with, you can see here that out of the 11,248 claims that have been created, 2,500 have had 739.1, 2,066, 723.2 as codes. I really urge and recommend that all of the practices that are listening to this or that we give instruction to are going to take the time to choose these codes that they use most often because out of the 11,000, over half of them are three codes. If you take it down to five or six codes, that makes up the bulk of the, the selections that you're going to make from a diagnosis code basis. And you can choose those and actually create these headings um, for yourself over the next few weeks. You can also unstar uh, codes if you want to, to take them out of there. That way, if you, if you do have a code that you chose by accident or incorrectly, you can get it out of there. The purpose of this, ladies and gentlemen, is for you to spend as little time choosing codes as you possibly have to. With a big change like ICD-10, which can affect reimbursements, you know, compliance issues potentially, we want to be as accurate as possible by matching ICD-9s to ICD-10s, but we also want to reduce the clutter that you have to look through. So if you're going to match up your codes, you want to choose all the ones and put them in a, a heading like this so that you don't have to waste time when you're actually treating patients later on to, to find those codes. Or worse yet, I'll describe a situation that happens to a few of our doctors. They say, I'll get to it later. If any of you have ever fallen into this trap, you know that later can sometimes never come and things start to really pile up. So some preparation right now can really help by going in and choosing these particular codes. I'm going to click back to ICD um, nines for just one second. And if I look at this um, 739.1, even if I don't want to go find it, I can choose 739.1, select it, and we'll see that this code only has one ICD-10 code associated with it, which is your M96.1. And we select it. It's already up there. So you can actually go about choosing all of the codes that you have individually and put them in the areas in your ICD-10 favorites so that you guys can spend less time choosing those codes. If there are any questions while we're going through this, please just chat it in. We've got one question. Uh, so he wants to know how to save those searches up at the top, the headache and the knee and whatnot. Okay. So when you choose a code, um, it just so happens that we had already had one of these done. Um, just, is it going to automatically? Uh, no, the, the top is just a search um, yeah. to get you some categories uh, for what type of codes you want to look at. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, subluxation or a headache, knee, whatever it might be. Um, once you type in that information, there's a star over on the right-hand side. Um, and you can just hit that star on the right. And that's going to add another so I added, category. <laughs> I added cervicalgia to this one. You know, there's only well, one code that's there right now, and there's no other drop downs uh, according to it. So I don't know if you necessarily want to, if you're going to use cervicalgia all the time, you probably want to have it start. Yep. Um, so when you search using the top, uh, you'll see down at the bottom the matching codes. Um, we'll give you all of them, but the ones that you have starred will be right up top under your favorites. Uh, so you don't have to dig through the uh, drop down menu with all the codes that yeah. match what you've typed. So I typed in a really broad one. Um, Peter Clark is the one who asked this question, but uh, I typed in lumbar. And you can see how many pages, emphasis on pages, <laughs> there are with things that uh, have lumbar in them. So if you can get even more specific. You know, you can put in stenosis or you know, anything else that you come up with and then create those headings um, based on your search terms. And so, Peter, let us know if that answered your question or if uh, we need a little bit more and we can always come back to it. All right. So when, and, and I can go on and actually get rid of all of these if, if I want to mm -hmm. by just unstarring them. If, you know, you don't have somebody that comes in for trigger point injections, some of our practices do, get rid of them. If uh, you don't really deal with depression as a, uh, as a diagnosis code, then let's get rid of them. 
we can add them whenever we want to to make sure that we add the codes to our favorites so that we don't have to spend time searching. So at this point, we have the ability to use this interface to search a code. The same interface is going to be released and will be available to use when you choose your code from the assessment. It's not released just yet, but it's going to be released soon. Not on all app servers. That's why I'm okay, saying yeah. it's generally available. Um, it is released on some app servers, but if you don't have it, that's uh, that's okay. Like it's when you, but when you actually click on this, everybody, you're going to have that same pop up of this interface come up, so that you can you know choose and star favorites. If you click on the um, the ICD-10 diagnosis on the assessment, mm, yeah, I'll get back there. So that big, really long one. I just know that all apps are. Yeah. Oh no. We, yet, this is so. only up to, um, I believe, app, app three right now. We have app? Okay. app three last night. Yep. App three last night. So this is being released as you speak. But if you're on um, a version of our software that doesn't have it, that's okay. You you should not freak out. You have not done the wrong thing. Um, if you if you're on app one or two, you can tell by looking up in your URL calls right here, and you'll see instead of beta, you'll see app one. If you want to get to a different app, oh, I'm sorry, versions, excuse me. You just click up here on versions, and you'll click, uh, you know, beta, weekly. Weekly would be the one they would want to get to, right, at this point? Yeah. Yeah. Weekly would be the one you want to get to, and it would bring you to one of the servers that actually has uh, this feature released to it for sure. Okay. But at this point, I want to make sure that we show them how they can start accessing this right now to start playing with it because you might want not want to do it on a live patient. So Jess is going to walk us through at this point how you can do it uh, with a, a dummy patient that you put together and make sure that you can start choosing selecting codes. But there is a step you need to take to prepare that dummy patient so that it'll actually work. And Jess is going to show you that right now. Wow. Hold on one second, Jess. There's a question. Uh, he actually wants to know how to oh. test it. So <laughs> All right. this works. He's asking questions that are right up the alley. OK. All right. So we have actually gone in and we created a fake payer. Um, so you guys can start testing it now. Obviously, you know, all the real payers, no one's accepting ICD-10 right now outside of testing purposes in very specific conditions. So the only way you guys can actually start testing is if you set up one of your fake patients that you test things out with in the system with a the payer name fake payer ICD-10 only. Um, so you can just come in here and really you can just type fake <laughs> and do the search and you'll get the three options. You want to pick the one for ICD-10 only. Um, and that will allow you to come into the travel card for that patient. Um, when you come in for the first time, you'll actually probably get a pop-up that looks very similar to this. Um, if you had previously uh, stored ICD-9 codes on that patient, this pop-up is going to come up as soon as you open that patient account. It's going to show you the ICD-9s. Um, we actually have some ICD-10s on this one already, which is why some of them are highlighted. Um, but it's going to show you the ICD-9s, and it's going to list the ICD-10s that correspond. correspond to those ICD-9s. It's using the same matching as the ICD-9 tab on the diagnosis. Um, and you can just select those codes right from here. Just click on all of the ones for the different ICD-9s and hit Save to Superbill, and you're good to go. Um, if the ICD-10 code that you want is not here, you can click the other row, and it's going to bring up that same ICD-10 search uh, that we've been showing you. Um, if the patient has not had ICD-9 saved previously, and you're coming in here and there's no diagnoses on this patient whatsoever, um, the button up at the top is going to be red because the payer you have selected is a payer that's only accepting ICD-10. You need to select ICD-10. We're giving you that big caution stop. You need to do this now. Uh, reminder, basically. Rhetorical question time, just a scenario that they may run into. 
What if they ignore it and bill out just your ICD-9s and you needed an ICD-10? If the payer is marked as ICD-10 accepting only, we'll actually stop that claim on the back end. It'll hit your provider workbench, um, so we're not sending out ICD-9 claims to a payer that's only accepting ICD-10. Yeah. Um, we'll also, um, with, with the real payers, you'll actually probably get some validations on the travel card as well, so when you actually hit submit, if you haven't selected ICD-10, you'll get a warning there, but if you say bill anyway, we'll still stop it and send it to your claims workbench. Um, and if you come in here and this button is yellow, it means that the payer you have selected for that patient is not accepting ICD-10 yet, but you also haven't selected any ICD-10s in preparation, so we're just saying, you know, just kind of a heads up, hey, you can save codes now so that when this payer does start accepting ICD-10s, you've already selected them, and you just have to review them real quick and say, yep, save to super bill, we're good. Um, and then when we actually first came in here, it was green, and that's just because for the codes that we started with, um, we had already selected ICD-10s for those. So it is a basically your traffic it's light. It's your traffic light. Yep. And uh, the recommendation is that you, you treat it as such. You don't want anything to pile up. The backlog of these start to pile up, we've seen uh, practices when they're not in a brand new situation like ICD-10 lose track and it can really get out of hand where they have to actually schedule an entire weekend to catch up on billing and if you stay with it real time at this point you're you're going to be much better off. The only other aspect of ICD-10 right now that we can kind of share is that back end, right? If, if we do learn that a payer has switched a you know, a requirement of now they're going to accept your ICD-10 codes. You can be on your 13th visit with a patient and the next visit is going to come up with a, with a traffic light. <clears throat> you might not, we've, we've run into some information, you might you know, have the ability to force through another ICD-9, it might work, but it, it eventually is going to stop and they can even accept those claims and you know, spend 35 days adjudicating them and, and then send them back to you. So we're going to try and give you as the up-to-date information as we possibly can. We have done all of the testing that we possibly can right now with the payers that we submit directly to or the ones that we have to go through clearinghouses. So all available testing on our end has been done. So we've sent a number of different claims from different types of tax IDs, et cetera, to make sure that all of our submissions are being accepted and read correctly so they can be adjudicated by the insurance companies. The, the only other ICD-10 preparation, again, that we really stress that you do is documentation outside of this. And we made some great recommendations for some specialists in the past. Anything else, Jess, that you wanted to point out about ICD-10? Not that I can think of. I know we want to... Do we want to go over when one payer was? That's true. That's the, the last thing on the list. Um, so when you do have uh, a primary insurance company that only accepts ICD-9 codes and a secondary in insurance company that only accepts uh, ICD-10, we, we do have to make sure that we have a mapping for each one, right? So each ICD-9 code that you select has to have a corresponding ICD-10 code, et cetera. And on the back end, we will actually choose the right codes for you. You do not need to do anything else. Uh, the only thing that could come into play is making sure you order them correctly for, for certain payers. You have to make sure you put the right codes in the right order and as well as the linkages for those. Uh, we have one more question here. Yep. Um, so when you're actually going in there, and uh, Peter wants to know how do you set up the travel card, the favorites for all patients, um, that's actually what you're doing when you're going in there and favoriting um, searches or diagnoses. It's not per patient. It's for all of them. Um, so you can set it up under one test patient, and all your favorites will be there um, if you go under someone else. So when you set it up for your first patient, you set it up for all of your subsequent patients. Right. The only thing that you need to go through for every patient is actually selecting the, the corresponding one. code. Yeah. Right. The codes <laughs> that are going on that patient's site. Yeah. Perfect. All right. I think that answers the question. But we had another question from B. Can you review how the unspecified codes will give additional information? Oh, um, when, can you bring up uh, just a search for 
something in the search box. All right. Um, just go back under one bar here. Sure. All right. Um, so for ICD-10, it's much more specific when you're um, putting in those diagnoses. Um, and so you'll see some of these like gray kind of top level codes. Um, for example, just because this happens to be the one on the screen, the M41.11. Um, if you can click on that one up. Oh, one up, sorry. So if the code is not specific enough, we're actually putting in this non-billable code message, letting you know that that code is not specific enough. Um, and if you click on one of the ones that is in blue. And Highlighted. Has, yeah. Uh, one of the ones that is specific enough, you'll see uh, not only do we give you the dollar signs um, in the main page, but if you click on it, we actually do give the description that that is a billable Mobile code. Out. It is specific enough. So near a skull and crossbones for the non-billable <laughs> and, and green and a dollar sign for the ones that are. Correct. All right. And if I star that one. Now it's up there. Now it's up there. Perfect. All right. So, uh, oh, that's Brian. Uh, Brian, does that answer your question? Let us know. And if there are any other questions, we'd be happy to take them at this. It's going, oh, sort of. But um, hopefully, Brian can uh, clarify where we missed. All right. Uh, Would you, do you want to? Um, I can. I can do that. Hold on one second here. Yep. I just have to make it a little bit bigger, guys, and we'll be right with you. Right here. Hey, that's pretty cool. All right, hey everyone, it's Brian, Dr. Brian from Genesis, and um, one thing I think we saw there, I just want to let you know because it's really, really cool, is on day one, the insurance companies have said, at least Medicare has said, that they're going to accept a lot of the unspecified codes. So Jason, in the beginning, when you were selecting um, 739 point whatever, uh -huh. and it was showing you cervicalgia. Yeah, um, yeah. That, yeah, that's, or maybe not cervicalgia, but there's a couple of those types of codes where that actually is not the most specific code, IC10 code. Um, so right now they'll accept that, but what we're going to have for those where there's exceptions and where you could get more detailed information, I don't know if Arez has this in here yet, but what they'll be there is actually more a more information tab or a little um, icon. icon. And so when you click on that icon, what will happen is it will open a window where Dr. William from Cairo Code is going to add additional information that's not part of the normal gem, gem mapping. Gem yeah. is not always specific enough. So if there's a situation where it's not specific enough, they're going to add a little window there that'll pop up. It'll give you the, the content, the information that you need, and he's even going to embed some videos in there so you get training at the point of where you're selecting codes. That why that's important is because insurance companies are going to accept those codes today and they're not going to tell you when they don't accept them anymore. Um, so we want to help you make the right choice, the most specific choice today, so that when that time rolls around and everybody else is getting denied when they change their minds, whenever day that is. And all the insurance companies will change it at different times, of course. Yeah. Um, but you'll be prepared ahead of time. You'll have selected the most accurate diagnosis code from day one. Awesome. That's, that's, a, that's a big feature that the other side of things is we're going to be looking at the denial of these claims um, based on diagnosis codes. So if there's, in certain situations, diagnosis codes that are not getting um, accepted or paid, on the back end, we, this is GEM mapping. We're, we're, yeah. gonna have, we're going to have something called GEM Plus, where on the back end, we can actually remove that from your options. So you won't even be able to make the mistake of choosing the wrong code. So I just wanted to throw that out there. If you know other docs that are going through ICD-10 right now and are looking at other systems that are telling them that there's GEMS mapping, well, GEMS is not enough by itself anyway. Okay, thanks. That's it. Yeah, it's no problem. I don't know if everyone remembers, but we had a big back end. It wasn't anything affecting doctors a couple of years ago where 
our electronic format submissions had to change from a format called 4010 to 5010. And every insurance company treated that 5010 form slightly differently. And there was no master plan. We did have to experience some rejections and learn. And so that analysis that we do on the back end of what goes where and what's specific has been really helpful. And so uh, having a big network to, to have people exposed to those has helped us find those much more quickly and make corrections to our system much more quickly. But most of you actually never felt any of the pain associated with any 5010. It was just a couple of practices where we were able to see what happened, make a change, send that out to the rest of the network so that they didn't have to do it. So if we find that one of these diagnosis codes is not being accepted by Medicare, let's just say, we'll be able to use what Brian just talked about and send that out to everybody you know, choose this instead, and we'll have a, uh, a window that will, will prompt you to make that selection. So, all right, we'll get back to, over to chat here. Oh, I'm gonna have to make it a little bit bigger, Jess. All right. I don't know if that's a question, it might be a comment. Yeah, specificity will be very helpful with extremities. I think that is a great comment. Uh, so, at this point, we're actually coming to the end of our ICD-10 section. So I'd really encourage anybody who didn't fully understand something to ask now. If you, if you don't even know how to formulate your question or it's still just something that you're wrapping your head around, open a ticket to our team, to your coach, and we'll get you directed to the right people to answer that question. Uh, one last thing is I would still recommend every single one of you go through your system, run that billing stats report, billing statistics, going to billing analytics, billing stats, you know, choosing a fairly lengthy time frame and choosing your diagnosis. It should be available to all of you here, um, you know, for, for diagnoses, and then run that report and sort by your codes, the ones with the most visits. Those are the ones that you should go and create your favorites for. It'll make October 1 a very different experience for you. Again, the other thing we really recommend doing is on that fake patient that you're going to put together, some dummy patient, test.patient. I need to use it. <laughs> and, and putting that fake ICD payer in, you do it there, and you're going to create your favorites for all of your patients across your practice. It's really going to be a big help. Oh. Um, we have preset macros. Uh, will this affect those in any way, or should we update them in any way? If they have diagnoses in the macros, they will need to be updated. Absolutely, yeah. right? Yeah. There's no way around that. No. <laughs> yeah. So just because we can't make the choice for diagnosis code. Yeah, so your assessment, um, any of those, those preset macros that you have in the assessment with diagnosis codes, you will have to go you know, choose the ICD-10. Yeah. And yeah, if uh, anyone has the Davila macros, he's making me up. I'm photos. copied on Dr. Davila's blast emails. I, again, he is, he's on top of it at this point, and I know he's gone into our system and is, uh, I think it's already ready to go. I've actually seen the demonstrations of it. So I don't know if it's been pushed out, but it'll be pushed out soon if it hasn't been already. But for those who don't have um, set you know, macros that somebody else is managing their content, like uh, the Dr. Davila macros, you can do this yourself and uh, we'll help you if you need it. So I'll just give another minute or two um, to type in any other questions regarding ICD-10. And you know, while you guys are thinking about that, we're actually gonna stay on the line and we're gonna open it up. You, know, you can type in a question about anything else that you'd like to. Um, Oh, Brian Knight has a question on how to delete a macro. And just before you, you get into that, just telling everybody, if, if you want, if you absolutely want to, you know, ask about scheduling or some, some other feature, we're going to hang out for the next 20 minutes or so, and, and we'll answer them. All right, Jeff, thanks. How to delete a macro. <laughs> All right, so deleting a macro, you're going to go to configuration, practice, EMR macro configuration, all of the macros that you have. Um, will be listed here. And to delete one, all you're going to do is check the expiration checkbox on the right-hand side. 
and hit save updates. Um, and if you accidentally delete the wrong one, there's a show expired button you can refresh. Um, you'll see that the expiration date is now either today or sometime in the past, and you can just reset it to way in the future so it comes back. So what are the Davila macros? I'll tackle that one. Um, Dr. Davila owns Custom Cairo Solutions. And what he's done for us uh, and a lot of our clients has come into our system and created, I, I don't want to use the term compliant because I, I think any note could be compliant if the, the user chooses them, but he's made it easier to be compliant and trains people on very specific preset button configurations and X docs. So he actually teaches a system of documentation that people use in our system. And we've heard amazing results. We've got a number of doctors who have said that they've saved their practice. And uh, again, Dr. Davila and any other compliance expert will always say, call me before you get in trouble. So uh, Custom Cairo Solutions is one of the compliance uh, experts that we've used and recommended. And uh, people have raved about the results. So. All right. So again, we'll hang out here for any ICD-10 or any other types of questions. We're going to leave the chat open and we'll, uh, we'll tackle them as, as they come in. But that was really the end of the, the ICD-10 portion. All right. Oh, I got a couple of people. Maybe somebody else is going to type in a question. I love talking about the scheduler. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we still have some people on there. Yeah. Just wait and see if anyone else. Sometimes they won't have questions, but they're interested in hearing what other people are asking. Yeah, yeah. I mean, anything that you've gotten recently that, uh, that you've got a bunch of? Even when new releases? Actually, it tends to be mostly the ICD-10. Um, how do we address the need in ICD-10 to append initial visit or subsequent visit? I don't know if I'm following that one 100%. Uh, I know I was seeing some codes yesterday when I was working with someone um, that actually said, um, uh, I think it was M99, maybe? I don't know. I don't really understand the question 100%. Is Dr. Bryant still with us? I don't know if he... Mm. I'm sorry, what, what was the question? Uh, the, the question was, I, uh, how do we address the need in ICD-10 to append initial visit or subsequent visit? I believe we add uh, an A to the end of the ICD-10 for initial and B for the subsequent. Yeah, there is an appendage, but from what I understood, and maybe we should just have Dr. Davila come on the call uh, next week um, and explain a little bit more detail about those exceptions and things like that and the uh, those modifiers and maybe okay. even demonstrate his macros a little bit. I, I think that could be pretty useful. The only other thing I can think of is what Jess is showing is that we, we have the codes, the very, very specific S13.100 A, D, and S. Um, and uh, Brian Knight, if I can call him Dr. Knight, seems appropriate, uh, is saying, yep, that's it. So initial encounter, subsequent encounter. So it doesn't look like it was a, it was a B, Dr. Knight looks like a, a D. So Again, I'm not a coding expert. I, I do not have the ability to tell you which ones, um, but this does look to be available through all of them. Dr. Brian, uh, I don't know how feasible it is to get uh, Dr. Davila on next week's. Probably, well, I'll check with him and, and maybe if not him, but maybe Jen, they can okay. be able to get on at least. Okay, perfect. So Dr. Knight, um, look forward to a couple of up updates and uh, we'll, we'll make sure we answer it. So um, he writes, need to address a ladder, laterality. laterality as well as 
encoding left right okay so yeah that uh, that specificity in those codes is absolutely there I know that just you have to be able to choose which one <laughs> right and I, not all of them will have them but if there is one yeah um, you know maybe if I look for shoulder yeah. <laughs> you know left hand right um, mm -hmm. the codes are specific um, as to the side yeah, yeah. So, you know, some of these codes you might need to have um, both of them start if it's something that you're dealing yeah. with. Yeah, and Dr. Knight's just making sure that we have them listed there yep. um, so that we can get them yeah. when when necessary. Right. We, we loaded all the um, ICD-10s from CMS. Yeah. So all the codes should be there. Um, obviously, if you find one that doesn't seem to be, let us know, but um, we got them straight from CMS. Yeah. All right. Well, we're definitely open to any other questions. Um, a, a special thanks to to Peter and to Brian. If I can, I, I don't want to disrespect them that they're doctors, Doctor Clark and Doctor Knight, uh, for asking questions. I know they're pretty helpful not only for us but making sure that other people have a full understanding. What happens when you put in code seven thirty nine point seven? Not doing the search. It's, we can come back. Let's try that again. <laughs> 79.7. Uh, I know I am. Uh -huh. <laughs> Do it one more time. <laughs> oh, let's try it. Now it doesn't do the search that way. Um, but I can do it this way. I'm looking the right place. Point seven. Um, so that one's going to use the gem match, um, and it brings up a nine nine zero seven as the one that matches. According to gems, is the one that matches with that code. Um, Hold on. And a then yeah, we've got a couple. Um, he wrote something else. What happens when you put in that in regards to ICD ten crossover? All right. Does that answer your question, Peter? No other specific separation of sides. It doesn't seem to, not for that code. It just had the one. Um, let me go back to the diagnoses. Up here. Uh, up and there was seven. no way to expand that one, so. seven. Nope, that's the last that's one on the last list. One. There's no other uh, specificity for that one. Yeah. <laughs> um, for Dr. Knight, um, when you enter the codes on the EMR, um, and you, if you use the ICD-10 button and you use the search and it selects the codes, um, and actually let's add the code, hit save, um, you can use this up arrow to move the codes from the notes section into the billing section. So the code that you selected that's going to be in your note is going to be in your on your claim as what you're billing. Um, so that's how it's matching. Uh, so make sure your note matches the diagnoses. Uh, on the, the documentation claim. has no choice but to match what you're billing. Right. And to finish, Dr. Clark, yes, it's unspecified at this point, that, that other code. Yeah. Yeah. Which is surprising that ICD-10 does not get more specific with a code that's used so often. Yeah, yeah. this is the first time. Yeah. All right. Dr. Knight, did we answer your question? Can you go back to... Sure, no problem. Um, when you're on the EMR tab and you're on the assessment and you're selecting the diagnoses for the notes, you're going to click on the, the button right in the middle. It's really large. It says ICD-10 diagnoses. It's going to bring up the same type of search um, that we've been seeing everywhere. When you select one of 
the codes for the diagnose the patient. Uh, click on it, click the plus sign, it's going to be up over the top right in the selected code portion. Once you've selected all the codes for that patient, you're going to hit save. Now these codes are in your notes, but you want them to match um, on the claim. And in order to bring up the codes from the notes to the billing portion, you just need to click this up arrow. It's going to ask you if you want to move them. Um, it also will move any of the procedure codes selected from the plan section. Um, and when you hit yes, it moves those codes up to the top. Um, so your notes will match what you're billing. So let's just make sure we answered Dr. Knight's uh, question. Okay, okay, perfect. And then uh, Dr. Clark comes back, would be great if it gave the list of specificity. So will what Dr. Bryan spoke of do this with the pop-up be referred to? It could. I can't say with certainty, but it sounds like that's exactly what he was talking about. Right. Right now they're accepting some unspecified codes. Yes. Um, but once, if there is more specific, it will be yeah. added to it, more information. But with the other codes that we mm -hmm. looked at, mm -hmm. just kind of speculating with everyone on the call right now, and, and I, I don't want anyone to walk away with anything definitive here, with other codes, there's at least a lot of other choices. With that particular code, that was the end of the proverbial line. So I'm not quite sure what else could be done there, Dr. Clark, as far as choices. So we'll have to stay tuned, and uh, that would be a good one for us to, to ask Dr. Dubilla, you know, should he be able to join us, or Jen Dickinson. Right. Again, this is me trolling for additional questions. And I'm almost certain everyone else um, could say a thank you to Dr. Knight and Dr. Clark for asking these questions because they're great ones, and I'm sure everyone's going to benefit from them. Be a quieter conference room. <laughs> All right, we'll give another minute or two and then we'll wrap up if there are no more questions, guys. But we really appreciate everyone coming today. Yeah, we still have a fair number of people on and, and listening and watching. So. Please show us an example of a Dr. Davila macro. Uh, no, actually, I don't know if I'd be comfortable with that. Dr. Brian, I'll ask you. Um, that's his product. He, it's something that he sells and, uh, you know, people who gain access to it. And I, and I certainly don't want to disservice it by demonstrating it incorrectly. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, I, don't, I don't want to touch that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but we, we'll, we'll have them on and, and we'll, we'll record that just like we're recording this. So sure. Uh, sure. we'll make that available to you if you can't get on next week at 2 and or we can't do it at that time. We'll, we'll get it done and, and blast it out to you guys. Um, you know what? Dr. Brian, if I can interrupt you for a second, we can also direct anybody on this call to the demonstration YouTube video that both he and Jen Dickinson have put together, a couple of them, three or four, if I'm not mistaken, where they actually show that. So uh, it's not as if he's trying to hide them, or you can contact them directly. They've never shied away from showing them. <laughs> yeah, um, maybe a good time to show them the little contextual help um, thing, too, where yeah. we'll be adding more help. Uh, videos and content, I'm sure, for ISD 10. And just to, to answer Dr. Knight's last question, yes, he, he consults with a spectrum of practices, you know, cash-focused as well as insurance-focused. So um, out of our, our – we really do have a kind of a 50-50 mix of the practices that Genesis has of cash versus insurance, you know, focused. So. I can tell you he works with a good mix of both both of our client types. So right. I'm sorry, just thanks. <laughs> um, just uh, in case everyone had not seen them, um, we are adding these little question mark icons. Um, you'll often see them either at the top right or lower left of various pages within the system. Um, and when you click on them, they're opening up in context 
whole pages that explain the page that you're on. Um, we're adding videos to them. So you can be on a page, click on that question mark. It's going to give you a help page about that exact page that you're on. You can watch a video. And then, of course, uh, if you still have questions, always open the ticket up to us here at the help desk. <laughs> yeah, and this is replacing the Vericle Academy where you have to go somewhere else to find out about the page that you're on. So. How will this ICD-10 transition affect the claims that we still have you guys draft the paper? paper. Uh, it won't. It, it won't. If, uh, if we're dropping a claim to paper, we're going to fill out that HICPA with the right codes in the right places and send them to the right insurance company. If it's going electronically and, and eventually drops to paper from a clearinghouse that we contract with, the same thing is going to happen. You should not feel any sort of uh, pause in your system delivery or, or claim delivery to insurance companies. The ones that don't allow us to use your He's just clarifying which. Uh... Yeah. Do you guys plan on having web question and answer sessions like this and throughout ICA? Well, I can guarantee you we're going to be here every Tuesday. <laughs> so, uh, and again, the web question and answer sessions we're going to continue to do uh, without a doubt. Um, you know, our, we were trying this as an experiment. I think it was fair to say it's working <laughs> because you're here and we're talking about it. So great, we're going to keep that going. And uh, yeah, coaches are not generally uh, fully up to speed on ICD-10. You have to come to another resource in our company and they should be directing you to other resources and organization to talk about ICD-10. So yeah, we're going we're gonna to keep uh, Understatement. Thank you, Dr. Knight. <laughs> um, so we're going to keep uh, keep this up, um, and we, if the demand is there, we could, you know, especially during ICD-10 time, we might want to just put another one in on, let's just say, Thursdays, something like that. So, yeah. Yes, I'm sure we'll all be here. No vacations in October. <laughs> oh, I, I've already, guys, have already specified no vacations in October <laughs> for all of our staff. And actually, I said no getting sick. Everyone get adjusted. Get your nutrition plans up to speed this month. So, you know, right. please treat a Genesis employee for free in the next four weeks. <laughs> they need it. All right. That is a bad joke. <laughs> I, I know it wasn't funny. All right. Uh, any other questions, guys? Again, um, yeah. I've, you know what? We'll all do. We'll all stick to our day jobs, Doctor Knight. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Doctor Knight. Have a great day. All right. Thanks, guys. All right, guys. Then we're going to sign off. If there are no other questions, and I thank you all so much for coming and uh, spending an hour with us today. Thanks.